Hey, I want to welcome you to this video. I think you would find this to be a big, big blessing. And uh, this is just the first video out of a new kind of series I'm doing. I'm in Mexico right now. I'm sitting out here. It's a public place. I found, uh, I don't know if people will walk around, uh, but maybe I will get interrupted. There's birds singing. You sometimes hear dogs. Uh, so it's my studio right now is what I have. It's warm here in Mexico and very, very warm and it's still winter. So uh, yeah, a lot of things are happening here. We have been training some churches. We have been doing kickstarts in different churches. And now yesterday we started something new where we gather seven churches together. Some of the churches, they send the people, some just send the leadership. And we were training them, we were teaching them. And yesterday I spoke about repentance. Tomorrow we will all come together again where I'll speak about baptism and so on and so on and so on. And it's a teaching where I lay a foundation, biblical foundation, what do the Bible says, and then I give practical tools. How do we look in our life and how do we use this to lead other people, for example, to repentance. So the teaching is biblical foundation but still very very practical and I did it yesterday first time and it was it was amazing and I, I felt when I woke up this morning that I should just publish the teaching to all of you out there so this is the first one where I talk about repentance and next time in a few days I'll do one about baptism and some of you have heard me speak about repentance before but this is going to be different uh, in some areas. Why? Because I've changed. Uh, I've been in jail with this Bible here and it really, really changed my life. And uh, I see things in a, in a new light also. And I think that will be clear as we move on. This video will be long. I just say right away. Why? Because I will go through scripture, but I will also come with a lot of examples how, how we can use those scriptures to to understand, to, let's say like that, how we can use the scripture and the examples to lead other people to repentance. How we can help to open their eyes so they see their sinners need, forg uh, need forgiveness and how that forgiveness is being received in Jesus Christ. So it's, it's going to be practical and I think it's going to be a blessing. What I want to start with is in Luke 7, Jesus tell about a sinful woman, a sinful woman who's been forgiven. At one time, he said that two people, two people owned some money to a money lender. And one he owned 500 denarii and one owed 50 denarii. He, none of them was able to pay back, so he forgave both their debt. And then he asked, now which of them love him most or love him more? And the answer is the one who had been forgiven more. And there he said in Luke 7, 47, he talked about the woman who had been forgiven much, and therefore she loved much. And then he said this, but who had been forgiven little, love little. The more you see you are forgiven, the more you love him. Who forgave you and this is very 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 important and I think we have done a big big mistake in the churches that we don't preach sin the way sin is supposed to be preached and people really don't see their sinners and understand how much they have been forgiven and therefore they don't love Jesus the way they're supposed to love Jesus it come back to that I had a time in my life where I was like, I'm not a bad person. I'm not like that and that and that and that person. I did not see my need for forgiveness. Then I heard the gospel. I repented. I experienced forgiveness. But still, I, I didn't understand how great a sinner I was before. Why? Because the full gospel had not been preached to me. The more I understood the full gospel, the more I understood how bad a sinner I was, 
the more thankful I became for the forgiveness I have received. And it was not because I suddenly became a worse sinner. That it was not because suddenly what I did in the past changed, but I saw what I did in the past in a different light. And the more I saw my sins, the more thankful I became and the more in love with Jesus I got. And I want to say that if I look at the church today, one of the reasons people really don't love Jesus the way they're supposed to love Jesus is because we don't preach about sin and repentance the way we are supposed to. So it is important, all of this, for all of you out there. Let's move on. If we look at John 3, we see, uh, or Matthew 3, we see John the Baptist arose, uh, arose on the scene. And there John the Baptist started to preach. And the first thing he said was, repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. That was the first word that came out of John the Baptist's mouth in Matthew 3. In Matthew 4, Jesus now appears on the scene and Jesus also starts to preach. And what is the first thing he preaches? Repent for the kingdom of God have come near. The same message as John preaches. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near. Then we see Peter after the cross rise up and preach after the cross on Pentecost in Acts 2. And the first word that comes out of Peter's mouth is also repent. So John, Jesus and Peter all start with the word repent. Not believe, but repent. If we look at the churches today, we often don't say repent. We often start with believe, have faith in God, have faith in Jesus. But in the Bible, let's start with repent. Repent is the first thing. Repent and then believe. Turn away from your sins. And repentance today is not the first thing that's being shared, sadly. Often it's not the second thing or the third thing. Sometimes repentance from sin comes very, very late, much later. And it's something we, some places, never talk about. We are afraid to talk about sin. But sin is the issue. Jesus was the Lamb of God who came to take away our sins. The Bible says that he got the name Jesus. Why? Because he should save us from our sins. We are not saved from hell in that sense. We are saved from our sins that lead to hell. The one who sins shall die. And if we continue in our sin, we will be judged. That is correct. But we have been preaching our salvation from hell instead of salvation from our sins. And that can be very, very dangerous because there is people today who continue living in their sins and believe they are saved. Why? Because I believe in Jesus. But faith in Jesus, faith in God without repentance cannot save anyone. We read that the demons believe, like, and they're not saved. So having a faith without repentance is not, will not bring salvation. And, and we need to come back and preach the same gospel we see in the Bible. And when John started with repent, Jesus started with repent, Peter started with repent, what should we start with? Repent. Repent for what? For your sins. Let's go to book of Acts and come with an example of how they preach. In Acts 17, there we have Paul, we see there, then Paul, he says this. At one time he said, In the past, God overlooked your ignorance. But now he commands people, all people everywhere, to repent. So God, after Jesus stepped in, start with John the Baptist, repent. Then Jesus, repent. And now Paul and the apostles and you and me say that now is repent. Why? Because 
What did we read before? Repent for the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. And this is what we see in Acts 17, 30. In the past, God overlooked the ignorance, but now he commands people everywhere to repent. Why? Next verse, 70, 31. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with judgment. judgment. By one man he have appointed, and he have given proof to this to everyone by raising him from the dead. And what? Who is that? Jesus Christ. So by Jesus being raised from the dead, that shows that he is the one, he's the Messiah, he's the son of David, he's the son of Abraham, he's the one God has chosen to set up his kingdom here on earth. He is the one who's going to judge the nation. And, and, and that is what we need to also preach. Uh, I, I just find here in, in Acts 2, it's actually interesting because before Peter said repent, we read here that they were caught to their heart and asked, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent. That's the first thing he said. It's not the only thing. Repent, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. I will come back to that later. Before that, we read that he quotes Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit on the right hand unto, I make your enemy a footstool, a footstool at your feet. He's quoting Psalms 110. And further, before that, we read that he talked about how David died and was in the grave and how Jesus was the one who was rose up from the dead. So Jesus was the one. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the one God said, sit on my right hand until I put all your enemies at the foot stool on in a foot <laughs> at your foot. And he will come back and judge the nations. The kingdom of heaven have come near to us. Jesus came here, he died, he rose up, he went to heaven, and very soon. God have already set a day when Jesus will return to bring salvation to those who have made themselves ready, who is awaiting him, and he's going to judge the nations. And that's why we now need to repent. We repent looking forward to that day. Let's go to 2 Peter because it becomes even more clear here. 2 Peter 3.9 The Lord is not... Slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he had patience with us, not wanting anyone to perish. So Jesus did not, or God did not want anyone to perish. But everyone to come to repentance. Again, not just come to faith, believe in God and come in a church. No, he wanted anyone, everyone to come to repentance. Why? And then he continues... The, law, the day of the Lord, so after he talked about repentance, he talked about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heaven will be dis, the disappear and the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. So everything here will be destroyed. And the next words, since everything will be destroyed, be destroyed in this way. What kind of people are you to be? You are to live holy and godly lives. So when we talk about repentance and living godly and holy life, we are not looking so much backwards to the cross and what he did only. We are looking forward to the return of Christ, to that day, the day of the Lord, when Jesus will return and set up his kingdom. Why? Because if you have not repented, if you have not got sin out of your life, if you don't live those holy lives, you are not going to enter into his kingdom. And you read about his kingdom, the new heaven, the new earth in Revelation 21 one, as one place. And there we read verse 7, those who are victorious, those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Are you victorious? Have you been saved from your sins? 
Have you been transformed, regenerated? Are you being sanctified? Are you living that life, walking by the Spirit? You will one day be glorified. When Jesus returns, you will be like Him. But then we read next word, but a cowardly, unbeliever, murder, sexual immoral, immoral, those who practice magic art, idolaters, liars, all liars, they are going to be thrown into the lake of fire and this is the second death. What side are you on? Are you on that side who are victorious and will inherit all of this or are you on the other side? So that is why we repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near to us. So the call to all of us is a call to repent. Repent has to do with change of heart, mind, and action. But it, is also, it also has to do with committing your life to God. We turn away from sin and we turn toward God. It's not just turn away from sin. We also need to turn toward God. And this is what is clear in Acts 20, 21. We read here, Paul, he said, I had declared to both Jews and Greek that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one place he said it. In Acts 26, 20, he said there, I have preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. So there is a, a turning away from sin and turning to God. Or there is a turning away and, having, and then turn to God, put in faith in Jesus Christ. So it's not just change your life and try to live holy. You also have to turn to God and you have to put your faith in Christ. And then show, demonstrate your repentance. How? By your deeds. Matthew 3, John the Baptist, he said there when they came to be baptized of him, You blood of Bible. Who warned you to flee for the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. So we need to produce fruit of our life keeping in repentance. Repentance is an ongoing thing. It's a life. There is one time you truly repent and change your heart towards sin. But then you need to keep living a life in repentance. In that sense that you keep living that life. You don't go back to the old life. It's not just, oh, I repented years ago. No, are you living in repentance today? Yes. Some people say, I, I have repented, and then I will look at their life and say, no, you have not. How can you judge me like that? You don't know if I have repented. Yeah, I can know the tree by the fruit. I can hear out of your mouth that is filthy word. You are lying. You are deceiving. It's, it's not truth you are speaking. What the heart is full of is running over. I can see the way you are living. Like, like you just have a, 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 dollar t a, do a affair with a woman or you are looking with lust at somebody and looking at porn the, the all day long. You're doing things you should not do as a repentant believer. So, so repentance is... is, is it, and it's, it's not enough to say sorry. I, I came with an illustration there. If, if I go up to somebody and I like hit him. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? Yeah, I can. Okay. And then ding, I hit him again. Ow. Why are you doing that? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I really feel sorry. Can you forgive me? Yeah. I can. And I hit him again. Ow! What are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Can you forgive me? You're not sorry. Stop lying. Stop mocking me by saying you are sorry. If, if you really meant you are sorry, you would not hit me again. And hit me again. If you really meant you are sorry, you would stop doing what you did.
we have been preaching forgiveness without repentance. We have people coming to the altar Sunday after Sunday and ask forgiveness and then they go back to the same sin again. Next Sunday they go to the altar again, ask forgiveness and go back to the same sin, sin again. That is a mockery. That is actually to mock God. Don't say you're sorry if you don't mean you're sorry. Don't ask for forgiveness if you're not willing to repent. You need forgiveness and repentance is so so connected. And and we need to preach the true gospel. Repent and what do that mean? Change your heart, change your mind toward those things. It had to do with saying I am sorry, but it also had to do with turning away from and then put your faith in God, put your faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. Repentance is the first step. And that is also the job of the Holy Spirit, to convince people of those things. John 16, we read here, Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit. He was sent. And then John 16, 8, Jesus said, when he comes, that is the Spirit, he will convince the world of wrong about sin Righteousness and judgment. That is what the Holy Spirit will convince the world of. Sin, righteousness, justness. Not joy, peace and prosperity. And we, we often like go to people and say, Oh, give you life to Christ. Why? He will give you more peace. I have peace. He'll give me more joy. I'm okay. He, he will bless you and give you a big house and a big car. Give you life to Christ and he will give you prosperity. And we have had people coming to church out of that. Because, not because they're seeking forgiveness. Not because they're seeking Christ. Not because they're seeking eternal life one day and inherit the heaven and earth. And because the kingdom of God have come near and they want to escape from this present evil age and know that there is a promise one day where everything will be good. No, they're seeking blessing here and now. They come to church and some of them meet God, but those people will often fall away as soon as persecution come in. They are not rooted. They don't have a foundation and they're living in deception. <laughs> and the truth is... Many people in church are not born again. Why? Because we don't preach the true gospel. They come for all the wrong reasons. And we don't understand why people are not cut to the heart. They're not cut to the heart. If you preach joy, peace, and prosperity, how can the Holy Spirit take that and convince people of sin, righteousness, and judgment? <laughs> he cannot. He cannot like, use our words when we speak that, oh, I'm cut to the heart. Because you told me that God loved me and a wonderful plan for me and I'm perfect the way I am. People are not going to change by that. And this is also what we see. We need a cut to the heart. We need to preach the gospel. Matthew, uh, Acts 24, 24. We have Paul, Paul here in front of uh, Felix and his wife Drusilla, uh, who was a Jew. And we read here that Felix often sent from Paul uh, to hear him speak about faith in Jesus Christ. And, and this is what we need to first. We need to talk about faith in Jesus Christ. Share your experience. Share how Christ has transformed your life. Share how you love him. Share how he, you have met him. You have met God. What God has done. Share your personal faith. That is very, very important. But it don't stop there. After he shared his faith, because sharing the faith is somehow not sharing the true gospel yet. It's part of it. Share what Jesus has done. But don't stop there. And many people say, I've shared the gospel. What did you share? Oh, I spoke about how Jesus has changed my life and I come in the church. Did you talk about sin? No. No, no. I don't, I, no, we don't want to talk about sin because then people get offended. Okay, then you're not sharing the gospel. If you don't talk about sin and repentance and judgment and, 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 uh, and the world to come, you're, you're not sharing the gospel. You're not sharing what we saw in the Bible. And, and we see that here with Paul, Acts 24, 25. Paul starts to talk about righteousness. In, oh, sorry, 24, he said, spoke about faith in Jesus Christ. And then he continues. And as Paul's talking about righteousness, self-control, or that is sin, 
and judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, now is enough. You have to leave and you may leave. And then later he sent for him again. It's very interesting. Paul talked about faith in God, but then he also talked about sin, righteousness, and judgment. Those three elements. The same three elements that the, the Holy Spirit came to convince people about. Sin, we have all sinned. Righteousness, what Jesus did. He died, he went to the heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit down here. We can now be forgiven. And judgment, that uh, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to judge the prince of this world and throw him to the burning fire together with everyone who follow him. Sin, we have all sinned. Jod righteousness found in Jesus Christ by the cross, going to heaven and send his Holy Spirit down here. And judgment that uh, Satan has been judged together with those who are the children of Satan, those who live in sin. And when Felix heard that, he became afraid. He should become afraid. You out there who have not truly repented, you should be fearful. I just want to speak to you and come with some examples, the way I often speak to people. Instead of trying to convince people and talk about joy, peace, and prosperity, I often talk about death, eternity. Do you know that 150,000 people die every day? That is 55 million people every year. 55 million people die every year. You're going to die. I'm going to die. 10 out of 10 die. Like yesterday, when I spoke, everyone in this room, there was 200 people. I said, all of you, you're the dead some years from now. We are all going to die. Everyone is going to die. It's up to man one time to die and then be judged. And uh, it will come when we die and Jesus come back and there will there'll be a resurrection of all people. Some to eternal life and some to eternal death. And we see that. The books will be open one day and everyone will get according to what they have done in this life. And this is the truth for all of us. And we need to be aware of that. We need to understand that. You need to understand that. And that's why you need to repent. Because God will judge you. And repentance has to do with sin. But repentance also has to do with death, dead works. And we see that in Hebrews 6, 1, where he talks about laying the foundation. And what is the foundation? Repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Works cannot save you, my friend. It's like you drive over a red light and the police stop you and say, you broke the law. You drove over a red light before. I need your driver license. Yeah, officer. Yeah, I know I drove over a red light. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be sorry, but I still need your driver license. Oh, well, officer, there's one more thing. Yes, I drove over a red light, but do you know how many green lights I have taken this day? I've been driving over... 10 green lights just this day. It's like the last week I've been 100 green lights. In my life of driving, I have been driven over, uh, drove over thousands of green lights. That will also count for something. It don't. It don't count for anything. It's not like every time you drive over a green light, you have a plus in your account, and when you take a red light, you have a minus. Sin, Good deeds never justify wrong. If good deeds could justify wrong, Jesus did not need to die. You just need to behave and live a better life and try a little more. If you are seeking salvation through going to church, to praying, to reading your Bible, to giving money, oh, I give my tithing so everything is good, all of this, will not add to your account when it comes to salvation. You are a sinner and you need to repent from your sins and you also need to repent for your dead works if you believe that those works can bring salvation. They cannot. You need to repent for all of it. Nothing can save you beside Jesus Christ. Nothing you do can save you outside Jesus Christ. It is Him and Him alone who paid the price. And we need to now 
turn away from our sins, what we have done wrong, and we need to turn away from our dead works. We think we lead to salvation and understand that it's Christ and Him alone that is our Savior and that can save us. So we need to talk about sin. And I often, I often use this example. Try to imagine I have a camera and I have been filming your life from your born until today. And I have everything on my camera, your life, everything. What do you show, what, what is on it? What you have thought in your heart, the sexual sin you have done, the time you look with lust in somebody, the lying, the stealing, the deceiving, the time you looked around and no one saw it. I saw it. I have it on the camera. The time you turn off the light and thought no one sees it. I saw it. I have it on the camera. I have everything. Not everything. No, no. I don't have all the good things you've done. All the good things is not on the camera. It's only sin, the bad things and the dead works where you think I'm safe now because I did this. <laughs> I will put it all together. And I will put it up on a video camera. It will put it out on YouTube for everyone to see. Three minutes with the most evil, sexual, perverse things you have done and said and looked at. How are you happy if that was really revealed to everyone out there? You'd be so embarrassed. Why? Because you will, because you have sinned. You're not a good person. God is not throwing good person to, have, to hell. I've heard people say, oh God, how can a good God send good person, people to hell? He's not. He is good, but there's no one who's good. We have all sinned and we need a Savior. This, I did not record that film, but God wrote it down in his books. And one day at the resurrection, those books will be open. Read the end of Revelation. And everyone will get according to what they've done. There is only one way to delete that movie, and that is Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. It's not trying to arrange it by doing good works. It is Christ and Christ alone through repentance and faith in him. And, and we need to preach that, and we need to talk about sin. And good deeds is a mockery. It's like I, I said to somebody, well, I, I've just taking all the money I have and I have bought a car for you. This is a gift for me to you. I want to bless you with this car for you. And people say, no, I cannot receive your gift. No, it's for you. I, I, I gave everything I have to buy this for you because I love you. And, and you say, I, I cannot receive it. It's for you. I say, I can really not receive it. But, but here, and you give me $5. Here, I want to pay $5 for it. I, I cannot receive my, the gift. Here's five dollars. What? Are you, like what? This car costs so much more than five dollars, and you come to give me five dollars for this gift? That is some mockery. And this is how God look at our dead works when we think we can earn salvation. It is in Christ and Christ alone. And we need to talk about sin before we talk about repentance. Because how can people love him if they don't see what they've been forgiven for? Or let's go a step back. How can they repent if they don't know what sin is? It starts with sin and it starts with repentance. And we have been so afraid in the church to talk about those things. So we talk about faith, prosperity, happiness. Is there joy? Hallelujah. Is there peace? Hallelujah. Can God bless us? Yes, he can. The joy and peace is knowing that you are forgiven and you have eternal life. And the blessing, if God bless you on this side of eternity, you will be thankful. If you don't, you will still be thankful. Why? Because you are storing up treasure in heaven and you know one day you will inherit all of it when our Lord Jesus returns. And that is the day you are focused on and not just this day. Paul, he said in Romans 7, apart from the law, and he said, once I was alive, 
apart from the law. But when the commands came, sin was brought to life and I died. Sin, he said, that the law was given so we could recognize sin. The law don't save anyone. But it don't mean, and there I think the Ten Commandments, it don't mean that the law is bad. And people think, oh, you don't get saved by the law, so we don't talk about the law. The law is important. <laughs> Why? Because the law brings death. So people need, see the need of a savior. And if we don't preach the law, people cannot see sin. And that was what Paul said in Romans 7. It's even more clear in 1 Timothy 1. He says this, verse 9. We know that the law, no, verse 8. We know that the law is good if it is used properly. And properly. The law is good if it is used properly. We know that the law is made not for righteous, but from lawbreakers, for rebellious, for ungodly, for sinful, unholy, in righteous, and those who kill their mother and father, and murderers, for sexual sinners, for those who practice homosexuality, slaves, liars, and so on. And everything that is contrary to the sound doctrine, the law is not made for righteous people, but for those people, the Bible says. Why? Because it's through the law people see their sins. I grew up in a good family in many ways. My mom and dad was not divorced. None in my family, family was divorced. None had been in jail. We were not walking around with, dr with taking drugs. I drink beer and, al and alcohol like many other young people in Denver, but I never taking hardcore drugs. I, I thought I was a good person. Like, hey, I'm a good person. Like, I'm not like him and her and them. And I'm not like those people out there who's doing those things. No, I'm a good person. I never murdered anyone. I've never committed like rape. I've never committed incest. I've never been a drug addict. I pay my, my, my bills. I pay my taxes. I'm not like the cheater. I'm not, I've never stolen something in a shop. I'm, I've never broken the laws. I'm a good person. Until the law opened my eyes. And there I often go to Matthew 5 and start there. Jesus, he, he points to the heart of the law and, and that it's not just about the outward thing, it's about the heart. He says this, Matthew 5, 21. You have heard that said a long time ago, he's talking about Moses and the law in Exodus 20, you shall not murder, but, and everyone who murder will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, anyone who's angry with a brother and a sister will be subject to judgment. And again, everyone who said Raka, and that is idiot, would be uh, uh, guilty. Anyone who said you're fool will be damned to will be in danger of hellfire. You have heard you should not murder, but everyone who have hate in his heart, he said another place, are already a murder. Everyone who said idiot to somebody are damned to hell. Ouch. So maybe you are not physical murder somebody, but how is your, what about your heart? Have you have hate towards somebody? Do you have hate in your heart? Did you speak bad about people? Do you want people to be hurt? Do you say idiot to people? You are damned to hell, the Bible says. He continues. You are heard you will not commit idolatry, say in verse 27. Oh, I've not done that. No, no, no. I've been faithful. I've been faithful with my girlfriend only. But, but every six out of marriage is idolatry. There is nothing in the Bible called dating. If you are together, go to bed with somebody you're not married with, that is a sin, finally. You have to understand that. It don't, yeah, but we are engaged to be married. It don't matter if you go to bed with somebody you are engaged with or go out on the street and are together with a strange, stranger out there. It is the same. But I love that person. It don't matter. It don't change it. 
God had created sex to be inside a marriage to death do your part. It's so simple. And he said here, but he continued here, he said, you have heard I said you not commit adultery. adultery. But I say to you that anyone who look with a lo- woman lost for me have already committed adultery with her in his heart. So maybe you have not physical been out sexual, be with people, but if you sit there on internet and look at porn on your computer, God look at that like you are actually committing adultery with that person in your heart. And then he continues, if your eye cause you to stumble, throw, take it out and throw it away. It's better to lose one of your body parts than with your whole body throw into hell. If your right hand cause you to stumble, cut it off, throw it away. It's better to lose one part of your body than with your whole body thrown into hell. Or translate it with another modern translation. If you look with loss on somebody sitting at your computer on your phone and looking at porn, then take that phone and computer and throw it away. It is better to go to heaven without your computer and phone or with your computer and phone being thrown into hell. I'm just reading. This is how serious God looked at sin. And I'm really worried for the church here because how many men have not problem with porn and even women? That's why we need to repent. You need to see sin as what it is and hate it and run away from it. But I want to add here, repentance comes with baptism. I'm going to speak about baptism next time because if we only preach repentance without baptism, people walk around with that slave mentality or that dead body they're still a slave to sin and therefore you will not experience victory and that is big, probably the next biggest mistake the church have done one they don't talk about sin and repentance next they talk about repentance without baptism baptism need to be there otherwise people will not experience victory over sin and there is victory over sin You don't need to look at porn. You don't need to go around and like, oh, I have to go like this every time in a shop because I cannot look at anyone because I'm sinning, I'm sinning. Like, look at Christ. Be radical. I have an experience of freedom. There is freedom from sin. There is freedom from porn. There is freedom from those things. But freedom comes with a sincere and true repentance, with the fear of God, and with the baptism in water and the Holy Spirit and then get in love with Jesus and get your eyes on Him and be busy in the kingdom of God. If you're not busy, you end up doing foolish things. I don't go on vacation laying on the beach doing nothing. I've been in one time with my family in many, many years. We went to Greece one time and and we, we had a vacation where we just had a vacation place and there was a pool. And you know, I don't fight with sin, but being on vacation a, a week, after a few days there, I, I needed to concentrate. Don't, don't look, don't look, don't do this, don't do this. Focus, focus, focus. And it was really, really hard. And I, after a few days, this is not healthy. It's not healthy to go on a beach and just lay there and do nothing. So we, we don't just live that. We are busy in the kingdom, busy making disciples and preaching the gospel. And when you're busy and focus on Christ, you don't think of sin. So get busy. Understand the gospel and, and, and receive it in faith, Romans 6, and the freedom. And I'll speak about baptism next time. It's very, very important. But sin, have you ever lied? You are a liar. Have you ever stolen something? You are a thief. Have you looked with lust on somebody? You commit adultery in your heart. And then James 2, 10 is saying, whoever keeps the whole law but just stumb on one point are guilty in the all. He who said you should not commit adultery also said you should not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit the murder, you have become a lawbreaker. <laughs> so, so, 
it's not about like, hey, you can have five mistakes out of ten. No, have you broken one of the laws you are guilty in all? It's like you have a bracelet in your hand with ten pearls. Do you break it one place, it is broken. Maybe you are not murdered somebody, but have you looked with loss, you are guilty in all. Maybe you have not stolen something, but have you been lying and cheating that way, you are guilty. And to make it even more clear, First John 1 John 1.10 said, Who claims, if you claim you have not sinned, you make God a liar and the truth is not in you. So you have all sinned. We have all sinned and therefore we need a savior. And this is what Hebrew 9.27 is saying. Just as people are destined one to die and then face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. <laughs> and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Jesus is the sacrifice God gave for our sins. He's the only one who can take away your sins. He died on a cross. He was buried. If he one time had lied, stolen, looked with lost, like you and me, committed adultery, have other gods, blasphemed God, done what we have done, he had been guilty, but he was the only man without sin, and therefore death could not hold him, and he rose up again and went to heaven, sent his Holy Spirit down here. And what do we now need to do? We now need to recognize we have sinned against a holy, righteous God and we deserve judgment because God is good and we are not. We are sinners and we need to recognize our sins. We need to turn away from our sins, turn toward God, put our faith in Jesus Christ and be baptized in water and we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit as I will talk about the next times. But it starts with repentance. It starts with feeling sorry for our sins and turn away from our sins. And we need to continue in repentance and living in the life. First John 3 is saying this, No one who is born by God will continue in sin. Why? Because the seed of God remains in him and he cannot go on sinning because he's been born by God. When people have a sinful lifestyle, they are not born by God. They don't have the seed of God in them. They are still sinners. If you go to a church, worship God, pray, read your Bible, but continue in sin, you are a sinner and you will be judged for your sin. You are not born again. He continued, this is how we know who's the children of God and who's the children of the devil. This is how you know. Anyone who do not do what is right is not of God's children. No. Or everyone who do not love their brothers and sisters. Do you have hate in your heart toward brothers and sisters? You are murder, the Bible says. By this you know, not by who go to church and read your Bible and pray to God. By this you know, not who preach the gospel on a platform and make disciples. By this you know, to be honest, by this you know who's the children of God, who's the children of Satan. We all, of course, go to church, we all pray, we all read the Bible. I'm not talking against that. But that is not the main sign or the fruit we look at. You can know a tree by the fruit. How do people live? If you are truly born again, you cannot go on sinning. I see young couples in church who go to bed with people. They're not born again. Yeah, you can fall in sin. When I got saved, when I got born again, when I repented, my girlfriend came and I went to bed with her again. But when I did, they were like, oh no, what I've done, red light, red light, red light, red light. I've sinned, I've sinned, I've sinned, I felt so bad. I know I have sinned, I have forgiveness. No one needed to come and tell me, Tom, you have sinned, this is sin, this is wrong, don't do that. No one needed to tell me it. Why? Because the seed of God was in me and I could not go on sinning. The same with the lying, oh, I said something wrong. The same with, with, with um, looking with loss in somebody, Look, oh, 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 I don't want this anymore. Like, if I did something and went further out, it felt wrong. And I, I want to say about sin, just example. 
we need to have a balance. I had a guy come to me some years ago, um, funny but sad example at the same time. He came to me and said, Tom, 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 I feel so, I feel so bad, I feel so bad. I thought, oh no. Oh, I was in the city this day and, and I thought, oh no, what have he, he done? He was a, somehow a new believer. Oh no. Yeah, I, I went to the city and I was like, and I, I and thought, oh no. And said, yes, what now? What, what, what happened in the city? I, I went to the city and, and I, I saw a beautiful girl and I thought, oh no, what have you done? And I'm like, okay. And yeah, I, I was in the city and I, I saw a beautiful girl. And, and, and I was in the city and, and I saw a beautiful girl. And what did you do? Uh, nothing. I, I saw a beautiful girl. And I, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I can pray for you. Uh, and you can pray for me afterwards because I've also seen a beautiful girl. Like, like <laughs> sin is not if you suddenly recognize something, this is beautiful. Sin is not if you scroll down and suddenly there come a bad picture on your computer of a half-naked person. Or, or it, it's not if, what do you do with it? Do you dwell in it? Do you let your fantasy take you the whole way? Do you keep focus on it? And there is a time if you do something, you just feel like, oh, oh, now it's bad. Oh, I feel I'm stepping over something I should not do. And there you turn away and say, no. And, 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 and even before, if it is, you turn away. You don't, you don't go that way. Uh, so he had the wrong idea. And, and I want to say that, that if, if you go, if you say to yourself, if you go into a shop and say, don't look, don't look with lust, don't look wrong, don't look at girls, 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 what will happen? You will focus and think of girls and look at girls. But, so it's like saying to people, don't think of elephant, don't think of elephant, don't think of elephant. If you don't think of elephant, what will happen? You think of elephant. No, go into a shop and then think, Jesus, hallelujah. And think, who needs the gospel? Hallelujah. And then if you see somebody where you think, whoa, they're beautiful, you just, they need the gospel. Like everyone else, you don't, it's not a burden if you don't focus on it. And some people just over-focus on sin in a way that they never will experience freedom. just want to add this in here. But you cannot go on sinning if you're born again. If you have a, li li a, a sinful lifestyle and you don't have a problem with it, you're not born again and you need to repent. If you have truly repented and you don't feel victory over the sin and you struggle with sin, Ask God to reveal how bad that sin truly is so you come to a point of hating the sin. Ask God to reveal the fear of God in your life because fear of God is very, very important. And then examine your repentance if that is sincere and then listen to my teaching about baptism I will look at next time. Because I know many, many people who have truly repented, but they, were not, they did not have victory. Why? Because they have not truly buried that old life. They have not been baptized after they repented. So, so I want to say like this. Uh, by this you know who is the children of Satan and who is the children of God. Uh, last scripture, I think, and then uh, it's a long video already. First John is so beautiful. First John 1, 5 to 10, here. This is the message you have heard from him, and I declare to you that God is light, and him, in him there is no darkness. God is holy. If we claim we have fellowship with him, if I say I'm a Christian, but yet walk in darkness, walk in sin, I lie and, the tr and do not live in the truth. And that is what I spoke about. But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with each other. We have fellowship with God and we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. What do you mean to walk in the light? Move on here. And then the answer is, 
If we claim we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess, so when I talk about being free from sin, and I believe in freedom from sin, I'm not saying sinlessness. If I meet somebody who said, oh, I never sinned, I've not sinned the last 30 years. If I hear somebody said, I've not sinned the last 30 years, I will look at them and say, okay, I, I think I need to go. And I'll turn around and walk away from that person because that is a dangerous person who's living in a weird world. We can experience freedom from sin, but it's not being sinless. What is the difference? The difference is if you sin, if you do something wrong, you confess it and it's faithful to forgive you and you move on and continue walking in the light. You don't need to go back to the same sin again and again and again and again and again and again and again. No, there's freedom from sin. So you can repent and ask forgiveness and then move on in your life. That is freedom from sin. Walk in the light is that we live in holiness, walk with God, but if we do something wrong, if we say something wrong, if we, 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 we go a step too far in some area, and especially when you're new in the faith, you stumble more than when you have walked with God for years, then you don't stumble anymore, not in the same way you did in the beginning. But when you stumble, especially as a new believer, you do this. If we claim you don't have sin, you deceive yourself. So if you claim you are sinless, you deceive yourself and walk not in truth. But if we sin, or let's say it like that, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us for sin and purify us for all unrighteousness. What is walking in the light? That is, don't live with a hidden side. Don't live with an area in your life that cannot handle to see the light of day. If you struggle with sin, confess it. Find a brother or sister in the Lord and confess your sin to them. Of course, confess it to God, but get it out in the light. Because when you live with people, uh, sin in the hidden place, secret place, you will not experience victory. And then he say, if you claim you have not Sin, you make him a liar and the truth is not in you. That is for those people who say, I've never sinned, I've never done anything wrong. Yeah, listen here. It's almost an hour now. I want to say this story here. When I was in prison, uh, I got arrested uh, for some evil people <laughs> inside ICE who was a part of lies and accusation, human trafficking, weapon smuggling, all of it. You can see it on top of Sondergaard.com, the timeline I have in there. You can hear my story. When I got arrested, they took, had my iPhone, my telephone, and I put in my code so I could get some numbers. And um, later I got uh, put in a, from one jail, they transferred me to another jail. And when I came there, I got a property list with all my items, shoes, belts, sh uh, socks, underwear, all of it. Uh, but my phone was not on the list. And I found out the FBI or the people who arrested me I thought it was FBI because they showed the FBI sign, but it, I found out later it was, it was a corrupt uh, ho uh, ICE officer who was lying and cheating. And he wanted to get rid of me. We have a testimony saying that, that he wanted to get rid of me. He was speaking, listening to my phone calls. He was speaking to people on the outside and asked them to go to Homeland Security and falsely report me for human trafficking. Very corrupt person. We're coming out with more video about him later. When I came, was in jail and found out that my phone was not there and find out that evil people had my phone and have my, <laughs> my PIN number, have access to everything, my bank account, my browser history, who I, my emails, who I wrote with, what pages I was following on X and Facebook and all of it. When that happened, and I knew that people want to try to twist it for, to get rid of me and put me in a bad light. Of course, I stopped up and, and thought, whoa, is there anything in my life, in my life that I cannot handle to see the day of light? Do I have anything? Everything that's done in the hidden, in the secret place, will one day be shouted for the rooftop. Is there anything in my life that is not in the light, that is hidden? 
and I took some time. I was not just like, yeah, everything's good. I, I was, took some really time because I know that things could also be twisted. And I thought, my enemy now have my phone. They want to try to find things against me. They have access to everything in my life. Is there anything that cannot handle to see the light? And I came to that conclusion, no, there's not. <sighs> what a relief. What a freedom. Yeah, they can lie, they can cheat, they can deceive, they can cut things together and, and make me say something, do something I haven't done. But I know there's nothing that cannot see the day of light. But it's only because some years ago, it's now many years ago, I experienced the true fear of God in my life. I understood what true repentance was. I experienced the power in the baptism. And I have, and even more now, is stronger now, because I know that one day, it will not be FBI who will take my phone, it will be the day of the Lord. On the day of the Lord, oh, the books will be open, and everything will come to the light as it is. Live for that day. Don't let that day come as a surprise. Be purified now as the bride, ready for that day. Clean up your life. Clean up your life. Live in a way that you have nothing that cannot handle to see the day of life. And it comes to what we it start with repentance. It start with recognize sin and say, I'm sorry. Cry to God turn away and say, God, give me a hate toward that sin. Let me hate sin the way you hate it. Understand what Jesus did on the cross. And then after you are repented, be baptized. If you cannot wait till next time I do the teaching, you can already go in and see some of the teaching I have about baptism. Reach out to people on tlrmap.com, green markers near you, and then get baptized. Say, I need to be baptized. I, I want to confess my sin to somebody and be baptized. Help me. If you don't have anyone, reach out to us and I can, we can find some people who can help you. So you can confess your sins, so you can uh, come in the light and be baptized uh, free and receive the Holy Spirit and continue walking in the light and in the freedom. And, and continue keeping repentance. So if, if something comes in later, as soon as you've done something, don't drill with it, don't walk with it for weeks or months, bring it to the light right away. Say, I'm sorry I did it, I should not have done it, and, and so on. And, um, and, and this is what we need to do. So I hope and pray that this teaching has helped you, it has blessed you, and this is for you, but it's also for everyone out there. So share this teaching with other people out there who need to hear this teaching and, and start to preach the true gospel. And the true gospel has to do with repentance. The kingdom of God has come near. Don't start with Christ. Why? Because why do people need a savior if they don't see their sins? And what I did yesterday, I sh sh talk about sin, 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 like I did now. And then I said at one time, now. And everyone was crying. Now we understand sin. And there was quiet. I said, the truth is God could take every man and throw us to hell and still be good and loving because he's not a problem we are. In many ways, we don't deserve anything else because there's nothing good in us. But I have good news. He sent his son Jesus to die for us, for you and me. And in him there's forgiveness and eternal life. So repent and turn to God and put your faith in him. There Jesus come in. After people have seen their sin, we bring the Savior. If you start with the Savior, the why do I need a savior? I'm a good person the way I am. And that is a big, big problem. We have been preaching the savior without starting with the sin. That's why we not need to start with sin and repentance. Hope this bless you. I would just pray for you here in the end. God, I pray for everyone who see this video. Pray that you open their eyes. Pray that this would be like a sword that will cut down. If they have sin in their life, that, that you will reveal it right now. Speak to them right now. Speak to them right now. I ask God that they will speak to you right now in the name of Jesus and show them areas 
where there is hidden sin. Show the areas where they need to repent. And I pray that there will come true repentance through this video. And pray that repentance has to do with turn away from sin toward you. But repentance also has to do with doing what is right. And that is to preach sin and repentance to other people, God. God, this message is not only for us, this is for everyone. And we should not fear people, but we should preach the truth to people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope this blessed you. And um, share the video with other people, please. Uh, give a thumbs up. Uh, comment the video. And then I'll be back in a few days where I will build on this. And there we will talk more about the baptism and other things. God bless you all out there. See you another time. Run with Jesus, make disciples and live the life looking forward for the day of the Lord when we will all receive what it due to us, what we have done in this life, good and evil, and uh, receive a great inheritance that is waiting for us in heaven. Why? Because we are in this world, but we are not part of this world. We are not storing up treasure on this world, but storing up treasure in heaven, living with our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. God bless you all. Bye-bye.